ഹായ് സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് വെൽക്കം ബാക്ക് ടു ഗൂഗിൾ ക്ലാസ് റൂമും ശ്രീ ഗോകുലം പബ്ലിക് സ്കൂൾ ഗുരുവായൂർ ഹൗ ആർ യു ചിൽഡ്രൻ ഹോപ്പ് യു ഓൾ ആർ ഫൈൻ ഓവർ ഇൻ ദ ലാസ്റ്റ് ക്ലാസ് വി ഹാവ് ഡിസ്കസ്ഡ് അബൌട്ട് ദ നേച്ചർ ഓഫ് സർവീസസ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ്സ് വാരിയസ് ടൈപ്സ് ചിൽഡ്രൻ വാട്ട് ആർ ദ വാരിയസ് ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് സർവീസസ് യെസ് സർവീസസ് ക്യാൻ ബി ക്ലാസ് വേഡ് ഇൻ ടു ത്രീ ടൈപ്സ് ബിസിനസ് സർവീസസ് പേഴ്സണൽ സർവീസസ് ആൻഡ് സോഷ്യൽ സർവീസസ് ഹിയർ ഇൻ ദിസ് ചാപ്റ്റർ വി വിൽ ഡിസ്കസ് ഇൻ ഡീറ്റെയിൽ അബൌട്ട് ബിസിനസ് സർവീസസ് ദെൻ വാട്ട് ആർ ബിസിനസ് സർവീസസ് ബിസിനസ് സർവീസസ് ആർ ദോസ് സർവീസസ് വിച്ച് ആർ യൂസ്ഡ് ബൈ ബിസിനസ് എൻ്റർപ്രൈസസ് ഫോർ ദ കണ്ടക്ട് ഓഫ് ദെയർ ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസ് ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ബാങ്കിംഗ് ഇൻഷുറൻസ് കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻ സർവീസസ് ട്രാൻസ്പോർട്ടേഷൻ വെയർഹൌസിംഗ് etcetera now let's discuss about banking services what is banking service banking has been defined as accepting for the purpose of lending an investment of deposit of money from the public repayable on demand order or otherwise and withdrawal by check draft or otherwise from this definition we can understand banking means transacting business with a bank depositing or withdrawing funds or requesting a loan etc banks can be mainly classified into four types they are commercial banks cooperative banks specialized banks and central banks then what are commercial banks commercial banks are institutions dealing in money these are governed by indian banking regulation act 1949 there are two types of commercial banks public sector banks and private sector banks then what are public sector banks public sector banks are those in which the government has a major share while private sector banks are owned managed and controlled by private promoters the examples of public sector banks are sbi pnb etc while the examples of private sector banks are hdfc icici etc then what are cooperative banks cooperative banks are governed by the provisions of state cooperative societies act and it is meant essentially for providing cheap credit to their members the next type of bank is specialized banks specialized banks means those banks which satisfy the specific needs for example foreign exchange banks industrial banks development banks export import banks etc these banks also provide financial assistance to industries and the next type of bank is central bank the central bank of any country supervises controls and regulate the activities of all the commercial banks of that country it also acts as a government banker it controls and coordinate currency and credit policies of any country the rbi is the central bank of our country so these are the different types of banks and its main features now let's discuss about the main functions of commercial banks the first function of commercial bank is acceptance of deposit people who have surplus funds with them would like to deposit these with the commercial banks banks accept mainly three types of deposits what are they they are fixed deposit account saving bank account and current account then what is fixed deposit account fixed accounts are time deposits with a higher rate of interest as compared to the savings accounts next type of account is saving bank account saving accounts are mainly meant for encouraging savings by individuals 
banks pay rate of interest as decided by RBI on these deposits. And the next type of account is current account. Current account is an account which aims at providing banking services to businessmen who make and receive payments through banking system. So these are the different types of bank deposits. Let's discuss about another functional commercial bank that is advancing of loans. The second primary function of commercial bank is to extend loans and advances. Lending is the most profitable business of a bank. Banks charge interest from the borrowers which are more than the interest they pay to their depositors. Banks these days extend loans and advances to their customers in the following ways. They are cash credit, term loan, overdraft, bill discounting, etc. And the next function of commercial bank is check facility. Banks have provided a very convenient system of payment in the form of checks. The check is the principal method of payment in business in recent times. It is convenient, cheap and safe means of making payments. Another function of commercial bank is remittance of funds. Banks help in the remittance or transfer of funds from one place to another through the use of various credit instruments like check, draft, mail transfers, etc. And the last function of commercial bank is allied services. Banks provide allied services such as bill payments, locker facility, underwriting services, etc. They also perform other services like buying and selling of shares, debentures on instructions and other personal services like payment of insurance premium, collection of dividend, etc. So these are the various functions performed by commercial banks. Now let's discuss about e-banking. E-banking or electronic banking is a major innovation in the field of banking. Earlier, banking was conducted in a very traditional manner. There were no such innovations. Information revolution led to the evolution of internet which led to e-commerce and it is continued by evolution of e-banking. Then what is e-banking? E-banking means any user with a personal computer and a browser can get connected to his bank's website to perform any of the virtual banking functions. In simple terms, we can say e-banking involves conducting banking transactions by customers electronically. The term electronic banking or e-banking covers both computer and telephone banking. Let's discuss about benefits of e-banking. E-banking offers various benefits to customers and banks. E-banking benefits to customers are It facilitates digital payments and promote transparency in financial statements. Various digital payment methods are Debit card, credit card, mobile banking, internet banking, etc. E-banking provides 24 hours, 365 days a year services to the customers of the bank. It enables customers to conduct permitted banking transactions from any place. That means customers can make permitted transactions from office or house or any other place. It inculcates a sense of financial discipline by ensuring recording of each and every financial transition and it provides a sense of satisfaction to customers because ease of banking transitions. So these are the main benefits of e-banking to customers. Now let's discuss e-banking benefits to banks. E-banking provides competitive advantage to the bank. 
ബിക്കോസ് ദ ആർ ഇൻ എ പൊസിഷൻ ടു ഓഫർ ഇന്നോവേറ്റീവ് ബാങ്കിംഗ് സർവീസസ് ലൈക്ക് ഓൺലൈൻ പേയ്മെന്റ് സിസ്റ്റം ആൻഡ് ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ബെനിഫിറ്റ് ഈസ് ഇ ബാങ്കിംഗ് പ്രൊവൈഡ്സ് അൺലിമിറ്റഡ് നെറ്റ്വർക്ക് ടു ദ ബാങ്ക് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് നോട്ട് ലിമിറ്റഡ് ടു ദ നമ്പർ ഓഫ് ബ്രാഞ്ചസ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ബിക്കോസ് ഇ ബാങ്കിംഗ് എനാബിൾ എ ബാങ്ക് ടു സ്പെൻഡ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ബാങ്കിംഗ് ബിസിനസ് ഈവൻ ഇൻ ദോസ് ജിയോഗ്രഫിക്കൽ ഏരിയാസ് വെർ ഇറ്റ്സ് ബ്രാഞ്ചസ് ഡു നോട്ട് എക്സിസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ബെനിഫിറ്റ് ഈസ് ലോഡ് ഓൺ ബ്രാഞ്ചസ് can be considerably reduced by establishing centralized database and by taking over some of the accounting functions that means e banking enables a bank to reduce workload on its branches by centralizing some accounting functions so these are the main benefits of e banking to banks so students i hope all of you understood the concept clearly and please note that the later urls dots of the lesson and test paper are also attached along with the class make use of these available materials study well and attend the test paper without fail that's all for today thank you